Hey, what's up? This is the Chill Cook, back with a basics episode for you. In the basics series, we talk about foundational, simple tips, tricks, recipes, skills that you should have in the kitchen in just a couple of minutes. Today, we're talking about one of the most important kitchen skills, knife skills. Not just important for being able to cook great food, also important for safety, and of course, all of those things come back around to being able to be chill in the kitchen. So, I wanna to talk to you about a couple different things before we get to chopping here. First, your cutting board. Wood is pretty good because it's sturdy, but it's also not so hard that it will hurt your knife. If you have one of those glass cutting boards at home, I'd like you to go ahead and pick it up and throw it in the trash. <laughs> those will hurt your knife. The glass is too hard. That sharp edge of your knife hitting against it actually can chip it and dull it really easily. And it's just kind of hard to cut on them anyway. So don't get one of those. Um, also, if you're cutting something like raw meat, uh, something that maybe you want to be careful not to transfer bacteria to other things, I'd recommend some sort of plastic vinyl cutting board for that. Wood can get little grooves in it and uh, you can transfer bacteria even if you try to clean it. Okay, So definitely look for a nice board that works for you, something that's easy to wipe off. And if it's wood, maintain it, oil it up with some cutting board oil to keep it looking nice and fresh and new. All right, now as far as knives go, there are a couple different kinds. There are Japanese style, which this is, and there are also the Western style knife. So one of the main differences between those two is basically that the Japanese style actually have a sharper edge to them. So the angle of cutting at that metal is like very tight versus the Western style, which is just a little bit wider. They both cut great. The Western style that's a little wider ends up having thicker metal, and so that can be a little sturdier, um, but I tend to prefer the Japanese because it's a little bit more precise. One of the other things that you probably haven't thought about if you're not uh, trained in the kitchen is the right way to hold your knife. Most likely, you're used to holding the handle. After all, that's probably what it's there for, right? Not true. So. Basically, the right way to hold your knife, go ahead and grab it between your thumb and index finger on that metal blade, right at the edge there before you get to your handle. And then wrap the rest of your hand around right behind those. This is going to give you a lot more control while you're cutting, and it's going to also balance the blade in your hand. And honestly, this is just the right way. Uh, just like maybe swinging a golf club the first time someone shows you the right way to hold it, it does not feel normal, but make sure you're holding it this way, okay? Definitely helps you keep things safer if you have a better grip on things and uh, you're a little bit more agile with it. The other thing I wanna show you, one of the other basic knife skill things to consider is the way that you hold the food with your other hand. So, the key to this is curling the tips of your fingers under and putting the knife blade against that flat part between your two knuckles. You'll see that if you're doing that correctly and you're really keeping those fingers tucked, you can move up and down chopping whatever food you're cutting and feel pretty certain that as long as that knife is touching that knuckle flat part, you're not able to cut a part of your hand. And then you're just going to move your fingers down the food you're chopping as you go. One of the big factors that separates a skilled chef from a home cook who's not particularly trained is generally that whenever you're chopping anything, vegetables, fruits, meats, they all come in lots of different shapes and sizes, the ability to get them into very similar shapes so that they all cook evenly. If you're a home cook, you're probably a little bit less precise 
and generally that doesn't matter, uh, but you might get a chunk of maybe carrot that's bigger than another chunk that you cut, and so that one won't be as perfectly clipped in the center as one that's maybe a little smaller. Those kind of things are pretty minor when you're at home, but you still want to try and achieve some of those levels of skill to do the best you can. I'm going to get started here. My example is this apple. And I'll show you again with just a small item. You're just carefully inching those fingers along. Just carefully inching those fingers along, always keeping them out of reach of that blade. And you'll be able to get faster as you practice. This is something that definitely start slow at. You want to be careful. I'm telling you, never cut yourself. Always use caution when you're dealing with sharp objects like a knife. But if you have your technique in place and you're careful, you'll gain more confidence and you'll get better at chopping stuff up. Honestly, it becomes a little bit fun. So uh, I have to thank an old colleague of mine. I used to work in actually retail grocery and she was a chef and she took some time to tell me that I was not holding my knife right and show me some of these skills. And if you're not lucky enough to encounter someone with that skill set, um, then that's where I come in to help you out a little bit. So good luck. This is one of the simple, basic, foundational items that everybody should know if they're going to be cooking. So thanks for joining me on a short but important basics episode. Check out thechillcook.com for full recipes, lots of other videos, plenty of other cool stuff. Follow us on Instagram at The Chill Cook. Make sure to tell folks about the show and uh, send them our way. Talk to you soon.